Hello again, everybody. Zach and Jack here with your TNA Impact Wrestling Review for Thursday, September 8th of 2011. I haven't seen the Impact shows in a couple weeks. I've been watching, I've been at the football games. I missed it for the last two weeks, so to watch it again tonight, very, very okay show. It's TNA. Like I said, same old BS, you know, mortal bullshit. Mortal everything, nah, 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 nah. leading towards Sting and Ric Flair next week. Apparently, got a stipulation: Flair wins, Sting retires, Sting wins, he gets Hogan. Probably Sting's gonna win. What's next week? Let's talk about tonight. Impact Wrestling. Oh, uh, Hardy. We'll get to him. We began with Anderson coming out, talking about he gets his rematch against Mr. Angle tonight. He said last week. I missed this, like I said, but I read, I read the results. Sting was facing Kurt Angle last week with Hulk Hogan, a special guest, Wig and Forcer. And Angle got the win. Sting got screwed. So this week, Sting will be the special guest in Forcer due to the network being involved. Getting involved in adding Sting to the match as a special enforcer, like what happened last week with Hogan with Angle and Sting last week. So then we have our Wheel Wrestling, which was a number one contest match for the TNA X Tag Team Titles. It was Devon teaming up with the Pope. Apparently they're on the same side now, because they, before, like I said, I start, started not watching it, they would come to each other's A's, and now they're apparently liking each other after initially hating each other. Or Devon not trusting the Pope, Pope, Pope liked him, Devon hated him, now they're on the same page. So we had those two taking on the British Invasion, a number one contest match for the Tag Team Titles. This Sunday, the pay per view again, Mexican Americano, as I like to call them. OLEX 2. Okay, wrestling match for a tag match. TA can put on better tag matches. The division, like I said, it's weak because machine guns are out because they're injured. Gen B is now apparently in WWE. Or at least trying out for WWE. A lot of controversy is running that. And the stack team division is suffering, but. It's okay. Okay, decent match at two or three minutes. Devon and Pope got the victory. Now, Devon's a full multi time tag champion with Bully Ray. We'll see if this team does any better than Team 3D. Like, I got it right. Like, I got it right. Anyway. <laughs> Our second match was the television match. Television, television match. Eddie Alvarez from. Stry and Strike Force fell to a little plug because it's on MTV. But, uh, he was commentating the TV title match against Mr. Eric Young, crazy one, cuckoo, versus Robbie E., who's on a career of crossroads. He lost Cookie, Cookie got fired, and he now wants Rob, uh, little Rob Terry to get involved. Of course, Rob Terry did not get involved in this match. Okay, match at best, or a little comedy in there with Young and all that. Okay, Young retained the championship at the pile driver. One, two, three, victory for Mr. Young. Then we had the final four for the Battle for Glory series, facing up against each other before their four quarters match. They uh, had a little stare down. And Gano was like, you know, kind of like Magnus, when he was like, oh, I'm going to be the champion. Gano's going to help me win. You saw what happened later on. The main event, we'll get to that in a moment. A uh, little controversy with that. Uh, we'll see how it happens, but we'll see next. But Bill Money said, doesn't matter who wins, they'll support each other all the way. But we'll see. But what if it's between them? What if they both win? Or what if Gunner and uh, Bully Ray both win? Especially after what happened tonight. We'll get to that in a second. But when it comes to it, personal reasons may go after egos. You know, personal may go for professional reasoning. So. We'll see what happens this Sunday and see who better man wins. This see what happens in the match. Then, we have a third match. A little early, but because of the four quarters match, it was a main event. This was like the semi main event. Kurt Angle defending his title against Mr. Anderson. Now we know why it was a main event. Another, another immortal beatdown, another immortal attack on Angle and on, on Anderson and Sting. Before the little altercation, the match was okay at best. You know, okay wrestling here and there with Angle and Anderson, you know, unorthodox and a little distraction with the referee. That's when that's went down here. 
and Brian Hedder got poked in the eye, and Sting kind of intervened. That's when it all broke down. Then Anderson got the mic check, and here comes Gunner. It's like, one, two, for the red, for attack to Anderson, CQ, then of course all the goons come out. Abyss, and Paul Jerry, and everybody came flying down, attacking on Sting, and Anderson Hogan came out with the last warning shot on Sting. He wanted Sting out of his life. He saw this problem with Hogan and Sting in the last couple of weeks, a couple of months actually. But then later on, Hogan said, Yeah, Sting and Anderson are gone. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bish was like, No, no, no. Triple threat this Sunday for the title. As Anderson and Sting get the revenge on Kurt Angle in a three, three way match. Speaking of no surrender matches that were named tonight, do knock out Law, Miss Karen Jarrett, name Winter as the new number one contender for the Knockouts Championship after losing it last week to Mickey James. She gets a rematch this Sunday. A lot of animosity as Mickey teamed up with Velvet against Miss Angie. Angie, Angie, love it disappear. Anyway, uh, she teamed up with the girly friend. Let's say that. Girly friend Winter. Typical TNA knockouts match. Okay, moves. Winter got the victory over Miss James after spinning blood in her eye. Making a statement to Mickey about this Sunday. Now, if you've noticed, like, throughout the matches, especially during this one, there was, like, one, there's, like, three screens, like, a little entrance way, they have, like, a little screen curtain for the main entrance ramp. And they've been doing this setup for these kind of live impacts at other arenas since. And one of the screens kept flickering all night long. Like, the third screen, it was, like, one screen here, screen in the middle, screen in the end. Screen at the end, Kept flicking on and off throughout the evening, especially during the knockouts match. Let's we'll see if they fixed the technical flaws they apparently did after that match. The screen never flickered again, but we'll see if it flickers again in other impacts, especially the ones they're taping in Knoxville next month. After that, we had a main event, a fatal four way match, four quarters. The four men in the fatal four way final four of the TNA Bound for Glory series. Both members of Bill Money, Bobby Wood, and uh, James Storm taking out Gunner and Bully Ray. Mortal. Men's itself basically an immortal versus mortal versus fortune match. Although we don't know the state of fortune after what happened with AJ and Daniels last week. Apparently mortal apparently fortune's broken up. But we don't know yet. Because we didn't see AJ or Daniels this week. Maybe we answer next week or even this Sunday. But anyway, these are matchup. Okay, it's okay matchup. A little bit of moves there. Here and there with Bamboo double teaming. But the turning point was when Gono got the pin on Bully Way. That's shocking. That's because what if this happens? Gunner's taking on Robert Wood. Bully Ray takes on James Storm. Now what if Gono and Bully Ray both win? Especially after what happened tonight. Be very interested to see what'll happen. Gunner will lay down for Bully Ray. But apparently it seems like Gunner's not laying down for anybody. Not even one of his immortal brethren. He kicked Bully Ray, got the one, two, three, basically stole the ring right after Bully Ray, Power Bomb, Cowboy, Bubba Bomb, James Storm, and then he kicked Bully Ray. And before the match, Matt Morgan attacked Samoa Joe. Leading up to their match this Sunday at the pay per view. I'll try to watch the stream for it, but you know what? The streams suck. Anybody who knows me, anyone who agrees, we'll say everyone would agree with me. Now, watching TNA streaming sucks because they block it. This bad as WWE when it comes to free pay per view streaming. They suck. Anyway, overall, typical impact, especially any towards the no surrender pay per view. If I were to pick think two would win, I would pick. I would pick uh, Bully Ray to win. Or Willow Dale Storm, but it's tough to pick because, like I said, these guys may end up, especially what if Bully Ray, now this is a good scenario, what if Bully Ray or Gunner win? And then Angle beats Sting and Anderson. And then there's no other ton of matches between No Surrender and Battle for Glory. What if it's Immortal versus Immortal? Bully Ray or Gunner versus Kurt Angle? Unique twist. 
There could be unique tricks if that does happen. Uh, then we had Jeff Hardy coming out there in the show. The way it ended was kind of silly. It was like, he's like, I don't know if y'all will forgive me. Give me one more shot. I kind of quickly said one more shot. What do you mean? One more shot of whiskey. One more shot of cocaine. One more shot of a shot of a pot. Or another shot of being a teenager. He should have said one more chance. That's what I would have said. I would have said one more chance. Because saying one more shot, there'd be a lot of puns. One more shot of Jack. One more shot of this. One more shot of cocaine up the nose. That's what a lot of people will say probably when they heard him say one more shot. Oh, one more tequila shot? <laughs> it's funny what a lot of people say. I'm going to go with one more chance. Because if he said, you know, like said, we said one more shot, probably everyone had a lot of these analogies in their head. We're involving Jeff Hardy and his brother for that instance. Both drug addicts. Anyway, one down. Hopefully, Jeff can just act together. He's like, and it ended with him saying, give me one more shot. And basically, it ended basically and say like I'm back wrestling. He basically like I made a mistake. No one likes me now because of what I did. Yeah, you're a fucking asshole, man. You like drug addict, and especially after that Victory Road. Oh God, I I watched that Victory Road pay per view live streaming, and boy, two minutes. That was horrible. He deserved everything he got. He deserved to get suspended. He deserved everything because he fucked it up for himself. You know, at least he's taking some responsibility, but we'll see if it's responsibility is real or scripted. We'll see this adventure, how does adventure Jeff Hardy ends, good or bad. But it shouldn't end good, because I suppose I saw an ad on the website saying they're going to release a DVD of his. The best of Jeff Hardy, volume 2. Probably all this shit, plus his newer stuff, because he released a DVD of him before he got fired the first time. So... But I wish Jeff all the best, but who knows? You never know if Jeff Hardy, the, the Antichrist, the charismatic enigma, whatever you want to call him, the crazy guy. Don't matter to me. That is my TD Impact Wrestling Review for tonight. I'll see you tomorrow for another attack line. See you later, well, people. She's been attacked by the review. Thumbs up. Thank you very much. See you later. Bye-bye. Good night.